everyone, welcome back to my allotment diaries. My name is Emma, these are my allotment diaries. I'd love for you to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new to my channel and you love everything to do with gardening and allotments. Maybe you can't get there yourself right now and I'm a great person to watch because I will come here, come rain, shine or snow. And yep, I said the word, snow. Because here in the UK, it's about to turn really, really cold again this week. And I think we're due some snow. Well, it said it possibly might snow. Now that is a little bit concerning because most of my tulip bulbs are already starting to come up thanks to the really really mild weather that we had right at the beginning of January and I don't just mean a few guys, I mean pretty much all of them. I mean look at this, it's like a jungle, it's like a forest of early tulip bulbs coming up and they're coming up like in bundles this year, look at this. Look at this big bunch of them coming up. And I think the reason is I haven't lifted these bulbs ever. And they've been in for three and a half years now. So this is their fourth year um, coming up and flowering. And basically, look, they've just clumped themselves together because they are multiplying. That's what bulbs sort of seem to do. I mean, really, if you want to be really professional about it, you should be lifting your tulips up um, and like replanting them out or mulching or dividing them and moving them about a bit because I don't know, I think there's there's loads of logic behind that, none of which I've ever read into or anything. I know that's what you're supposed to do, I've never done it. But, like I said, they've never come up this early before, so I've got two scores of thought. First, first trail of thought that I've got, whatever you call it, is just to leave them to do their thing, because they're tulips, tulips like cold and they need the frost and everything to grow. I think they might just figure it out amongst themselves. You know, they're plants, that's what they do, right? Second trailer thought is to mulch them with an extra layer of mulch just to keep them a little bit warm and stop them from completely dying. I don't know if it's necessary though and I don't want to waste like a bag of compost on that. Veering towards just leaving them to do their thing and hoping that tulips understand that sometimes the weather is mild in January and sometimes it snows randomly. I'm sure it has snowed randomly in April before and we still had tulips so I'm going to leave them and then I'll let you know if mine die or not. So. <laughs> But you can mulch, it won't do any harm. Right, plot's looking wonderful and depressing still. <laughs> uh, just because it's grey and it's gloomy and everything's brown and there's not very much growing. Got some Brussels sprouts, got some tulips, that's about it really. Um, just looking like that. So, <laughs> very inspiring, isn't it? Um, and I thought, well, nothing much is growing, nothing much is going to grow, everything's flooded, we're due some snow. Let's just sort out the jobs that we don't want to do. And the job that I don't want to do, and I've been putting off, is compost. And I flipping hate compost, I don't understand it. I've done a lot of research over the weekend. Now a lot of you actually recommended some um, vlogs to watch and I'm going to leave them linked below. Um, also some books to read, Charles Dowding. I've got the old Monty Don um, gardening handbook thing out and I've been reading about that as well. It sounds so simple, doesn't it, compost? It's basically your greens and your browns, you mix them together, you keep it a little bit wet, you keep it warm, you leave it to do its thing. But for some reason, it's always just looked like that. I think part of the reason is that I'm putting the wrong stuff in it. So there's a lot of brambles in here, which apparently are not very good for compost. Um, I know that now, thank you, Monty. Um, and also, I think I'm pretty sure there's some bindweed in here too, but I don't think it'll do too much damage if a little bit of bindweed regrows. It's obviously not ideal, but it's the situation I find myself in, so it is what it is. As we always say on this channel over here, it is what it is, and what it is, it's crap. But we deal with it, we deal with whatever it is. It's what it is. It's all you can do in gardening, is just deal with what you've got. So, we're doing it, we're dealing with it. Right, first thing I'm gonna do is empty the whole thing out. <laughs> gonna regret saying that, I know I am. Right, let's empty this bad boy out. <laughs> in there too, we don't really want any rubbish in there, so I'm going to try and get rid of any rubbish that's fallen in there as well. <laughs> fallen, yeah, okay. Alright, I thought I'd be able just to tip it, but like most things in my life, it never seems to be that simple, so... Alright, I'm starting to think, I've got to the end, like, the, the bottom bit, and it's turning sludgy, I'm starting to think this might actually be compost. 
a lot of rubbish in here. Where that's come from, but this is the makings of compost. This is this is it. This is how it's supposed to look. This is definitely something that resembles. On oh look, there's worms. There's a worm in there. There's a living worm in there. Okay, this is really good. This resembles the kind of process of compost. <laughs> this is compost, right. Okay, this is good. Basically, where I've been throwing everything on it, obviously it has actually turned into some kind of compost. It's quite remarkable. That's incredible. It's actual dirt here, it's compost. Surely that is compost, right? Gosh, have I just, have I actually done it and, and not realized? Yes, that does sound like something I would do. So, something that I have learned in my years on the plot, shh, not now, not now. Something I have learned is that there are different types of worms, right? So in a compost, you kind of get these smaller worms that are quite red, and I believe that that is a compost worm, right? So it's not like an earthworm, it's like a compost worm. It likes compost, and I think I've got them in there. I think I've got compost worms. Oh, so exciting. Right. Put you back, mate. Here you go. Wiggle free, wiggle free. Okay. On the quest to make my own compost, I've accidentally made my own compost without meaning to or realising that I'd done it. Now, unfortunately, there's a couple of things to say about it, so let's take a closer look at what I've created. Oh, it's exciting. Right, so if we take the optimistic view that this is something I've created and it is all compost, and this is a heck of a lot of compost, right, that could possibly potentially be usable, it's probably about two or three foot deep and it's all starting to decompose. Now you can see, unfortunately, a lot of plastic in here. It is an allotment plot and also I've noticed here there's some glass obviously from an old greenhouse. I don't know how this stuff always ends up at the back of my plot, but it is an allotment plot and it, it just does happen. So I'm just gonna put that on there somewhere for now because I don't want to cut myself on it. Um, and yeah, look, you can still see plastic, but, but okay, let's just get away from all the plastic because it's a rubbish allotment plot. But this is all decomposing things that I have chopped up Right? There's little sticks in there and there's little bits of all kinds of stuff. This is compost. So here's a bit here that hasn't quite decomposed the same way, but it's going that way. You can see that it's starting to break up and turn into a compost, a compost looking substance, which is incredible. Now I thought it was all going a bit Pete Tong because all I had was all this on the top. Here's where it's going to get magical and here's where I've, my research has come into it, okay? so. I don't believe that that compost on the bottom is good enough to use yet and I think it's because I know it's not made up of everything it's supposed to be made up of, right? And I want to do a really good job this year. So we're going to put a layer of cardboard on the top of that and then we're going to start layering up. This is the best method that i found. I seem to enjoy any kind of method of gardening where it's like layering things up because I find it easier to layer than to dig out and stuff. So I've turned that compost now, which somebody else said to do, to turn it and now we're gonna put cardboard on it. So I don't wanna get like too overly technical because the thing that put me off about making my own compost was the idea that I thought it was really complicated and I didn't understand a word of it and it just seemed like this magical elusive substance that I couldn't seem to make. Um, I'm gonna keep it really, really simple from all the research I've done and just explain it like this. You need green and you need brown. Green is like, say I've just dug out my crops and it's green right you chop it up that's your green okay now brown is basically brown is anything that's already died and is literally brown old leaves right fallen from a tree that go in that's brown and then we've got like some crops that have died and they're now brown that's brown and obviously good old-fashioned my favorite cardboard that's also brown, that's gonna help with worms as well. Worms love cardboard, remember? So they're gonna love that basically. I'm pretty sure compost worms love cardboard too. They might have different taste buds, I don't know. 
pretty sure they'll just eat anything they're given to be honest I wouldn't get too fussy about worms um, diets and stuff like that I just basically say they like cardboard that's it that's all I know about them to be honest I'm not a worm expert my knowledge starts and finishes with cardboard okay so I'm gonna rip it up Right, there's our cardboard laid on. The reason I'm doing that is because people have told me to do that. It's a great way of just adding another layer to it. If I was gonna start my whole compost heap again, which I've done about four times, and I just cannot do that again, guys, I just can't. Um, I would probably put a layer of cardboard at the bottom and then start layering all my stuff on. Right, next we're gonna put all that stuff back on and chop it up. cardboard um, and I will continue to layer up cardboard as I add new stuff to it everything's been chopped up everything got taken out and put back in again now it's not completely perfect a lot of things are in there that people advise me not to put in your compost for example brambles bindweed um, some of the bigger stumps of things that I've taken out like the Brussels sprouts um, like stems and stalks and stuff like that so there's a few things in there that really shouldn't be in there but if I took it all out it take me all day. Um, it's not perfect, but it's better than it was. This is now the current situation of my compost. I'm really happy with it, to be honest. It's all been sort of chopped as much as I can. It's really hard work chopping stuff up. And we've got layers of cardboard under there. We've got another layer of like dirt and decomposed stuff. And then we've got another layer of cardboard. And then we've got the compost that we made before, which I think we can all agree was in pretty good shape this is now looking a lot better right this looks something that like something that could turn into compost it's all been chopped up i think the key is chopping to be honest the key is to chop it anyway ugh, complain that all day it's like a sandpit for adults i think the point is that we've made a massive massive improvement on what was once an absolute disaster now looks like that i'm really happy with that i'm really really pleased um and i'll continue to work on it My job at some point in the next week or two is to sow out some carrots in my polytunnel. I've never sown carrots this early in the year before, but I've never had a polytunnel before that didn't blow away. So we're going to sow some carrots, basically. What I want to do first is mulch in here because I think it needs a good old mulch. It didn't have very much compost in. So I made these beds here as proper no dig beds. I put a layer of cardboard down and then like maybe one bag of compost. So it was a very, very thin layer of compost. I want to keep top it up make sure it survives another year to be honest so we're going to put some compost down these are a couple of bags i brought these are blooming marvelous i've never used them before but we're going to try it now you can do on your go my friend on your go lovely no idea what any of this stuff is by the way i didn't label anything oh, i don't know label stuff Um, we were talking the other day how like like so much like of our food now is just covered in pesticides and stuff like so vegetables and fruit and stuff and it's something that I never used to worry about I used to think that people who worried about that had too much time on their hands um, because they were like not living in the real world like oh who has time to think about pesticides being sprayed on broccoli plants but actually I find myself really worried about it now I think you know, the standards of the food that you're buying in the supermarket now is just so unpredictable and you don't you really don't know what you're buying anymore. Um 
I brought a processed pizza the other day um, from, I think it was, well I won't say who it is, but it's a top supermarket in the UK and I brought it because it was Friday night. I thought, oh, we'll have a, a, a little pizza tonight. We ate that pizza and I tell you, I got two bites in and it had fresh, fresh looking cherry tomatoes on it. And I ate one of the cherry tomatoes and all I could taste was like bleach in my mouth. It was like this really strong chemical taste in my mouth. And I literally spat it out and I said to everyone, stop eating it, we're not eating this. I'll throw on some pasta or something, I'll make some pesto quickly. Um, it was disgusting. And this is a top supermarket, top quality looking product. It wasn't cheap, it was like £5.50 for a pizza. It's probably like that big, maybe. And I think that's the first time I ever put something in my mouth and thought, oh my god, what is on this? What had they used on this? Um, and it was one of those moments that's really eye-opening and really scary and you're like, oh my god, what is in my food? I don't want to become that weird person who goes on and on about it because I'm not, I promise I'm not. Um, but food is changing, guys, in the supermarkets and I don't know what's going on, but something is going on. And the, you know what the best thing that you could possibly do is? Grow your own. <laughs> Just grow your own. But even then, even then, um, it's not going to be completely perfect because obviously, you know, I'm buying compost. I don't totally know what's in this pack of compost, so I'm not making my own compost. Also, you saw the amount of plastic in my compost bin, so I know I am growing into microplastic as well. Um, but I think it's a better option than buying from a supermarket right now. So. I'd really encourage you to grow something and just taste the difference and see you know the things that you can grow there are easy things to grow that you can grow every year and you will not have to rely on a supermarket you will not have to buy strawberries again if you grow your own strawberries because you will get hundreds so there are things that you can do but I <sighs> just thought I would share that with you today <laughs> a bit scaremongering on a Monday <laughs> I'm gonna love you and leave you today. I hope you enjoyed my little vlog. I hope you it inspired you to maybe get out and try and sort out your compost heap. Um, I'd like to say oh, it's really not complicated. I do still find it quite complicated. I'm gonna see how it goes. I hope you think I've made the right steps. Thank you so much if you have left me a comment advising me how to do something. Um, it all does go in and I did use some of your advice today. Also I'm gonna leave all the recommendations that you gave me for um, people who know how to do their compost compost a lot better than me I'll leave them below in the description bar so you can go check them out as well we'll keep you updated as to how my compost pile comes on uh, I hope you enjoyed the vlog today if you did do subscribe to my youtube channel and I will see you again on Wednesday see you Wednesday stay warm if you're in the UK fingers crossed for no snow see you Wednesday